Okay, so here I have uh, my code editor where I have my script.php. Okay, this is just a very basic example of how you might write a, a custom processing routine to work along with S2 members API notifications. Okay, so you see here the, the super global get is allowing me to access the query string variables that the API notification URL is passing over. Okay, so just, so I'm going to switch screens for a moment. So just to review again, this is that line where I'm passing over the secret key variable and the txn underscore id variable in the query string, okay, which are just name value pairs. Okay, so I'm going to switch screens again back to my script. So here I can access that variable using the get super global and I can check to see if the secret key being passed in is equal to this value. Now why would I do that? Okay, because my script.php is going to reside on the web, which means that any robot or any hacker could try to access this script, and I want to make sure that my routine is safeguarded against unauthorized access. Now it's not likely that a custom script that you've written is going to be accessed by a robot or by a hacker. But you still want to safeguard it just to make sure, particularly if this routine is going to send emails or, or perform some action with a database somewhere. Okay, so I recommend that you just set up some key within your script and then I'm going to switch screens again. And you can enter that key here. And this is perfectly secure because you should be the only one with access to this list of notification URLs. So the key is just being exchanged privately behind the scene between S2 members processing routine on your server and the script that we have written that receives the, the connection, that receives the transmission, and just checks to make sure that, that it is S2 member that is passing that information over. So that's how you would verify. Okay? And then nested into this, I'm going to check to make sure that I have the value that I'm expecting to receive, which is the TXN ID variable. Okay, and so long as these two are true, then my routine. This is where I would process whatever it is I'd like to process. Okay, so you would write some additional code here that might send an email, it might uh, hook into a custom reporting tool, uh, any number of things that you'd like to process. Okay, so you can see if you are, if you know a little PHP, then you could probably put together a routine based on this example. Or if you're not, and but you that you have uh, you have the need to to do something like this, you could probably hire a freelancer. Uh, through a service like elance.com, uh, and they could write up a routine like this. So just knowing that this is possible is half the battle. Okay, and then having a script written is, is usually only uh, maybe one or two hundred dollars. It just it could even be less depending on what it is that you need to do. Okay, now this is another example here that I have open. And this code came right directly from the iDev affiliate uh, program management software. Okay, the IDEV affiliate system is capable of two forms of tracking. It can either use the pixel tracking method, which we covered in the first part of this video, or it can use this more advanced method, which is a third-party call. Okay, and by default, the code that they give you looks just like this. Okay, now, we don't need this full code with S2 member, because this full code is processing the actual HTTP connection itself. S2 member already handles that part. All we need is just the URL itself. So I'm going to copy this URL and I'm going to take that over to switch screens. I'm going to take that over and paste that onto a third line here so that we can see how we might integrate IDEV Affiliate's third party call as opposed to using the pixel tracking code that we demonstrated in the first part of the video. Okay, so in this third party call, I see all I have to do is connect to this URL. So for the sale amount, it has to be passed in as IDEV sale amount, which is fine. I just need to get the amount of the, of the payment. So I'll take this replacement code and change out that 99 default with the amount of the transaction as it is received by S2 member. Okay, and then the IDEV order number just needs to be some unique order number associated with, with this sale. So here we can use the transaction ID. Okay, and for payment notifications, I recommend using the transaction ID for affiliate programs like this because 
the subscription ID, although it is unique to every customer, it will, it will remain constant for all future payments, okay? Whereas the transaction ID is always unique for each payment. Even though it may always be associated with a common subscription, the transaction ID would always be unique. So this is even more unique than the subscription ID is. So I'll choose to use that in this case, since I'm integrating with a payment notification, okay? Now this one is a little more tricky. Here, in order for iDev Affiliate to track and credit the proper, uh, the originating affiliate that sent the traffic, it needs to know what the IP address is, the original IP address of the customer was. Well, S2Member does not make that information available in its replacement codes here by default. Okay, but you can pass that information through. You can pass lots of information through and receive it in a custom fashion. So here below, it shows you an example of how you would pass the IP address of a customer through the custom attribute in your shortcode. Okay, now you would just pipe the limit this additional field in, either to, if you're using the full button code for PayPal, then you would, you would set that in your full button code, or if you're just using the short code, which is what this example is demonstrating, then it always starts with your domain, that's the custom, the custom attribute in your short code, and then you would just pipe the limit in this PHP tag that would fill in automatically the IP address of the customer, okay? Now, if you set that up, then all you have to do in order to get the value of the IP address here is to use this CV1 replacement code. Okay, so that's perfect. That's all I need to do. So right here, I just change out and add CV1, and that will work. So long as I go back and I, and I add this pipe delimited field in to my custom attribute of the sh every short code that I have for every PayPal button that I've generated. Okay, so now we have just integrated iDev Affiliates behind the scene See, it's called the CURL tracking method, okay? And that was taken from the original code that, provi that was provided to me by iDev Affiliate, okay? Now, let's go back and take a look at this additional URL that we have here. This is an example where you might have a third-party service that is a URL pointing to something along the lines of a Weber or Constant Contact or a Salesforce, some sort of CRM solution, where you might have a software application that is already providing you with these URLs uh, in the form of an API on their end, and all you want to do is just integrate those URLs so that S2 member, the application itself, can communicate back and forth with your additional software installation that may exist on another server or with another provider. And so in that case, you just paste that URL in here, and again, very similar to what we did with IDEV Affiliate, we would just change out the variables and use replacement codes for that. Okay? So that's all there is to it. And each of these URLs will be processed whenever a payment occurs in the order that you list them here. Okay? Now, I'm going to come down to the specific post page access for just a moment and discuss quickly what this SP access URL is. With specific post page access, there is always a URL that is generated by S2 member that will take the customer to that leading post page that you've configured for the specific post page or the specific post page package. So I just want to point something out here. A lot of developers uh, ask me this question. If I receive the value of a URL, or for that matter, any of these variables, is this going to be possible, if we go back and look at the payment notification example, is this going to be possible for these, for these replacement codes to work correctly in the context of a query string? Because most developers know that these values need to be URL encoded in order for the value to be sent over properly. And the answer to that question is yes. All of these replacement codes are designed to be already URL encoded so that they can be used inside of a query string. So even in the case down here of this URL, this URL would be actually raw URL encoded so that the URL itself would pass through a transmission successfully. Okay, so you don't have to worry about the encoding here inside the URL. All you have to do is just place in, paste in the replacement codes into the lines that you add here, and everything will be fine on the other end whenever it's received. Okay, 
And that is S2 Member's API notification. It's very powerful. You can see how this could be extended into all sorts of situations. And if you have a developer that, you, that is working with you, uh, chances are they will find a use for this one way or another. Okay? In the next video, we're going to go ahead and cover API list servers. And S2 Member already comes pre-integrated with two very popular list servers, which include AWeber and MailChimp. And we're going to go over some uh, demonstrations of how you might accomplish that as well. Okay?